All right, so we got 10 GTA theories that might actually be true. We got CJ, the GOAT. Let's get right to the video. You the wrong house. Oh, hey, Big hey, Smoke. Big Smoke, it's me, Carl. Chill, chill. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look Big at Big Smoke, NGTA calm down, bro. That might be true. For this list, we're putting on our tinfoil hats and getting into some of the best fan theories, speculations, and conspiracies. Oh my God, who is it? Of Grand Theft Auto. Oh my God, he was a dude from uh, America's Got Talent in GTA 5, right? Below or and make sure to use a VPN, whatever. Because Life Invader is always watching. Before we continue, oh, wow. we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. All right, man, let's go, man. Let's do it. Michael is Claude. I saw your face. I remember Claude. you. Claude. Who is Claude? Make sure you. Sure that's a that's a at the beginning iconic of line. Five. The player engages in a heist, which ends in the death of a friend and escape of another, and Michael Townley being apprehended. Hey, right, Brad's gonna be fine. We gotta get the out of here. Who is Claude? This arrest ends in the witness protection and placement of Michael Townley, now Michael DeSanta. Showing that he already knows how to change lives, it's not hard to believe that before becoming Michael Townley, Michael began his life of crime as none other than Claude from GTA 3. So keep your hands on the wheel. If you don't mess this up, maybe there'll be more work for you. The timelines and age of Michael work quite well to fit this mold and some smaller details about Michael's character design help players to round this theory out. Uh. Ryder wasn't meant to be a villain. Yeah, you right. So you and Ryder gonna handle your business. <laughs> slang to their own mama. They don't care about nothing. You're naive, my friend. We gotta keep our focus. Facts. This theory is interesting as it focuses more on elements of the game's development rather than the regular wouldn't it be cool if theorizing that goes on with conspiracies all right some internet sleuths have made the assessment that Ryder was never intended to be a villain at first i thought Ryder wasn't a villain and that this decision was a last minute change to the game's story the evidence is damning during the green saber mission cj only refers to smoke's betrayal in the dialogue even though Ryder is clearly there smoke what you into Shh, that's it look at that ride in fact he never mentions him until the mission when he kills him. And here's that snake Ryder. Look at that fool hanging out with the ballers like they was lifelong pal. Also, Ryder, Ryder. Only has two spoken lines post betrayal. Weird. Ryder, unlike Smoke, can be seen as an aggressor to the ballers, and Ryder never. Ballers? Why he said like that? <laughs> The theory, although not mind blowing, holds a lot of weight. Nah, I'm down, homie. Three generations of players. Now we keep a low That's fire. Yeah. With our lives. As friends. Do I have a it's choice? fire. That's fire. I like that. The styles of GTA games from GTA 1 all the way through to GTA 5 have fluctuated with the types of players engaging in the game over its 24-year lifespan. Dang, that's this crazy. This theory suggests that the three protagonists of GTA 5 represent the three generations of gamers and play styles of the previous games. Wow. Trevor being the unhinged and manic embodiment of GTA 1, 2, and London. Shut up, oh. or I molest you, all right? Franklin being the representation of the class ascending stories of GTA 3 through San Andreas. And finally, Michael being the Four. new version of GTA, the postmodern story-driven carriage that is GTA 4 and its subsequent DLC. Leave Franklin alone. You're so goddamn dead. Rockstar are known for making commentaries on society. They've done it on countless occasions. Yeah. Some players believe that Rockstar was making a statement on race profiling through their protagonist, Franklin. Yeah. Once the theory went live, countless videos emerged showing the comparison of police reactions to Franklin as compared to the other two protagonists. Yeah. Hey, you keep us safe, all right, officer? You've crossed the line. The videos show Crazy. Franklin being attacked by police when simply just walking down the street and being pursued by police after honking his horn. Yep. Interesting, but also leave Franklin alone. That's something that I noticed too. LSPD, you wanna pull in your that man, Fra bro. Big Smoke was killing time. I'll have two number nines. A number nine, nine large. <laughs> With extra dip. Number seven, two number 45s. One with cheese. One with cheese and a lot of soda. This comically large order and the most quotable line from GTA San Andreas most likely has a hidden meaning behind it. In the mission drive through while making the order, Ryder spots a Bala vehicle and the gang chase them down and fire on them. 
The inevitable betrayal of Smoke combined with the fact that Smoke continues eating instead of firing on this particular Bala vehicle has led many gamers to speculate that Big Smoke's big order was intentional to buy the rival gang time and free reign or possibly a chance to get the jump on CJ and the other gang members. A chance they blew. Trevor killed oh, no. his mum. This one I could believe. Oh. This is what I could believe. You've done well for yourself. I could believe this one. Because his mom what was a weirdo. Doing here? In a strangers and his, his mom seemed like a weirdo. Visit from his mother, freshly released from prison. After apologizing, begging, and acting like the abused little boy he was self-described to be, he heads off to steal a van full of drugs at his mother's request. I feel like his mom like used After to like beat him or whatever. His mother is nowhere to be found. This, combined with the hallucinations common to Trevor, has led players to think that she was in fact a hallucination herself. I could believe Looking this. Looking at Trevor's upbringing and the way he breaks down when he is confronted by his mum, lends credence to the theory that Trevor actually killed it his seemed, mother. It seemed, when, when he first met his mom in this, in this scene, it seemed like he was afraid of her. Real. What the f is wrong with you running around the woods in a costume? I'm the last of my kind. From the days of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, players have claimed that supposedly, like in the remote forests of North America, Bigfoot roams the forests of The Bigfoot thing? I wish they would have put that... Like, have been shared online, but much like the real Bigfoot, these images are hard to prove as real. <laughs> Once GTA 5 was launched, the claims kicked off again. Yeah. This time with the added weight of players. I saw so many videos of Bigfoot. Not at Bigfoot in now, after all the Bigfoot hype of San Andreas. The most Rockstar has done is add Bigfoot into a mission as an Easter egg, but still to this yep, day, no solid evidence of the Sasquatch. I don't think that was him, but like. Game or in real life. Get down, boy. The Mount Gordo ghost. There was a traveling to a specific location and waiting until the clock strikes eleven. Don't the ghost like burn you on fire in this one? The spectral figure of the Mount Gordo ghost. The big question is, who the heck is it? The most popular claim is that she is the wife of in-game politician Jock Cranley. The reason this theory is most likely true is due to a newspaper article that tells a story of Jock's wife being pushed up a cliff. Oh, that, that is the same oh, mountain. Specified that is the same mountain. But it doesn't take a genius to connect the dots and realize that this ghost by a cliff and the wife pushed off the cliff, presumably by her husband, are one in the same. Makes sense. Big Smoke was waiting to kill Sweet. You picked the wrong house, fool! These are the infamous first lines of friend turned antagonist <laughs> Big Smoke. Oh, yeah. my dog! What's up? <laughs> After returning to San Andres in the titular GTA installment and visiting his childhood home whilst his mother's funeral was taking place, yep. CJ runs into Big Smoke inside the house where the two exchange loving words and general grieving support. But why was Big Smoke not at CJ's mum's funeral? Why was the close friend and big player in the Grove Street family not present at a Grove Street family event? And most True. importantly, why was Big Smoke inside CJ's mum's house true due to the later betrayal and the revelation that smoke was behind the murder of cj's mum players speculate that smoke was waiting for cj's brother sweet to return home where he would assassinate him and take over as head of the grove street families that's this a good theory, theory. i can't lie serious weight behind it and it doesn't take much to believe that's a Brad's good theory was meant for trevor I'm Mm, I don't know about this one, bro. The bullet shot by Dave Norton was meant for Trevor. I feel like Brad a was a throwaway character. If Later I'm being real, game dialogue plus the visual evidence during the scene in question makes sense. Makes it Ooh, clear yeah. that the bullet nah, that, really headed for Trevor. Yeah, nah, that because the bullet what does look like yeah. Players cannot seem to agree on whether Brad was supposed to be shot. Brad was a throwaway was character, to though. Trevor, if I'm being real, the bullet was supposed to hit Michael, and even those that agree on who the bullet was supposed to hit can't agree on why it was supposed to hit that person. The endless combinations of how this scene could have gone down and the speculation of what would have happened. I feel like Michael loved Trevor a lot as a friend. I, I don't think he cared much future. about Brad, if All I'm being real. I'll keep thing. it real. Brad was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nah, it's just Brad was... Did you enjoy a... this video? All right, I did enjoy the video. Uh, what I'm, I think for that one is... It was just like... I, I, yeah, it was just like... The, uh, yeah, they. I think Rockstar executed perfectly. Brad was a throwaway character. Uh, if I'm being real, of course, it was a setup. Obviously, it's a part of the story. I feel like Michael didn't really care. Obviously, you know, it's a story, you know, and whatever the rock star put out, whatever the rock star put out. What I'm saying isn't actually confirmed. But if we think about it, it it's pretty, it's pretty, 
you know, it's pretty self-explanatory in the story that Michael loves Trevor. And if he didn't, he would have got rid of him. Simple as that. They would have made they would have made uh Dave Norton, not Dave Norton. They would have they would have made that FBI dude that shot Brad shoot Trevor, and Brad would be the one that survived. Whatever, blah blah blah. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like Michael would like Trevor if that makes sense. Brad was a throwaway character. Uh, in my opinion, I don't really have any. Uh, I don't really care for Brad if I'm being honest. Uh, so yeah, I mean, out of out of Michael, Brad, or Trevor, if if I had to choose one to go, it would be Brad if I'm being honest. But comment down below who's your favorite GTA Five character uh, or GTA character just in general. These are some good theories. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It's free, and if you guys don't subscribe, you know what's coming. Other than that, I'll, I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out.